Song meanings. American Pie. Pie, pie this American Pie. I drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Dubbed the Song of the Century, Don McLean's 1971 classic has some of the most memorable lines in music history, but it's not just a catchy hook. There's so much depth packed into this one song, it'll blow your mind. Let's discover the meaning behind American Pie. At 8 minutes and 36 seconds long, American Pie is the longest song to ever reach the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. It's not just about rock and roll and the American dream, it's a song that inspired a whole generation. When asked what the song really means, Don McLean frequently jokes, it means I'll never have to work again. While that's certainly true, his tongue-in-cheek reply doesn't even begin to scratch the surface. Fans have been trying to uncover the meaning for years, but recently, the original manuscript for the song totals a staggering 16 pages, and it was auctioned off for a whopping $1.2 million. While the new owner is anonymous, the photos from the manuscript gave us a chance to finally get some definitive answers. It's the creative process from, from the beginning to the end. You see m m great moments of inspiration. You, sp you see him attempting things that then didn't work out, a direction that he was going in that he then didn't want to follow. To decode this masterpiece, we'll start by taking a look at some of the most cryptic and mysterious lines in the song and check out some of the popular theories alongside the real meaning. So bye bye Miss American Pie. The most popular rumor for this line theorizes that American Pie was the name of the plane that crashed with rock and roll legend Buddy Holly on board. In McLean's own words, Holly's death was a personal tragedy for him when he heard the news at just 12 years old. However, that's not the source of the most famous line in the song. Instead, some researchers think Miss American Pie is a symbol of the beauty queen Miss America, and the singer is saying goodbye to a simpler time and an optimistic youth. The day the music died, this line is actually about Buddy Holly, who died on February 3rd, 1959. The lines together are a farewell to the 50s, but we can't just sum up the entire song as a eulogy to Buddy Holly. There's so much more packed into the next verses. Do you believe in rock and roll? Can music save your mortal soul? These lines describe the transition into the 60s, where faith in music was replaced with faith in God. After confrontation with Holly's untimely death, had left the speaker in a state of existential dread, punctuated by more religious imagery woven throughout the rest of the song as symbols of loss. Lines like the sacred store point to a time in the 50s where the speaker still had faith and innocence, qualities that only exist in the halls of his memory. The speaker isn't alone in this suffering, as the girl he saw dancing in the gym rejects his pink carnation and pickup truck, leaving him out of luck. The Rolling Stone is Bob Dylan, another contemporary musician of McLean, whose luster wore off as he ended up gathering moss. Bob Dylan's influence continues with the line, when the jester sang for the king and queen, in a coat he borrowed from James Dean. Here we see Dylan who started off as a simple court jester to become one of the revolutionary minds and leaders behind the 60s generation to dethrone the king of rock and roll Elvis Presley, which we see in the line, while the king was looking down, the jester stole his thorny crown. The jacket Dylan borrowed is referencing the jacket he wore on the cover of his 1963 album, The Free Wheelin'. The Rolling Stone of Dylan and the revolutionary ideas he championed were ground to a halt by the 70s replaced with growing societal rejection of conventional values. However, there are conflicting views on the lines in this verse. Alternatively, the king and queen could be Pete Seeger and Joan Baez, the folk sensations of the early 60s, whose crown Dylan ultimately stole. Another theory paints the pair of rulers as President John F. Kennedy and the First Lady Jackie Kennedy, whose crowns were stolen by Lee Harvey Oswald. While disagreement still runs rampant over the exact references in these lines, the verse clearly paints a picture of a changing world, as the Beatles later surpassed Dylan by the end of the 60s, which is exemplified in the line, Now the halftime air was sweet perfume, while sergeants played a marching tune, referencing the Beatles album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. In this line, Dylan is reduced to the jester in a cast after his brush with death in a motorcycle accident. The 60s were fueled by the hippie culture and use of cannabis and psychedelic drugs, but the love generation turned sour in the line. 
We all got up to dance, but we never got the chance. In the next line, players try to take the field, but the marching band refused to yield. One theory paints the marching band as the police blocking civil rights protesters. Do you recall what was revealed the day the music died? This is one of the most cryptic lines in the song, with some speculating that it refers to the Chicago police riot of 1968, where violent clashes between police and protesters ring out on the streets of Chicago. Others believe it refers to a John Lennon and Yoko Ono album cover. A third possibility could be the Miss America contest protests, where feminists reportedly burn their bras. In theory about the riots, what was revealed was the corruption and distrust sown by the government at the time. It could also be foreshadowing the next lines, and there we were all in one place, a generation lost in space. Some believe these lines refer to Woodstock, but when read together with the day music died, the lyrics match up with a tragic concert at Altamont Speedway on December 1969, where Jack Flash sat on a candlestick. There was a huge turnout, with an estimated 300,000 people coming to watch the show with the Rolling Stones and Jefferson Airplane. Then the line, no angel born in hell could break that Satan's spell seemed to fit with stone singer Mick Jagger, who showed up in a red cape with lyrics that encouraged rebellion. While the show went on, members of the Hells Angels motorcycle gang, who were hired as security, clashed with the rioting audience. Jagger was seen as complicit in the violence since he didn't stop the show to let tensions die down, which led to the lines, I saw Satan laughing with delight the day the music died. It was like the anti-Woodstock. While Woodstock helped kickstart the counterculture movement, the Altamont riot was seen as the downfall of the hippie generation, tearing down a whole movement and people's entire worldview. The next lines aren't just poetic. They point to the very real events that followed the Altamont concert. McLean himself goes down to the sacred store where I'd heard the music years before, only to find the man there said the music wouldn't play. Prior to these events, Music stores used to have listening booths so customers could preview their albums before buying, but afterwards, they put a halt on the booths, effectively killing music for would-be fans. The magic associated with music and the role it played for McLean and his youthful contemporaries was gone forever. When we actually sit down to look at the original notes for the song, we see that McLean didn't just paint a picture in a song. He created an entire epic that describes the rise and fall of rock and roll. It didn't just speak to a particular group of people or tell a singular story. American Pie is a recipe of all that rock and roll had to offer up until the day it was written. It's even more striking that McLean was able to pack so many catchy riffs and refrains while also writing next level lyrics. The movement throughout the piece almost evoke a classical concert style song that keeps listeners engaged for its full next to nine minute runtime. It was over double the length of what most radios would accept for a single, but its challenge towards convention spoke to the very foundation of rock and roll that was woven into its lyrics, a song about the rise and fall of counterculture that ultimately kickstarted a new wave of rock fans and legendary rock artists. American Pie remains just as poignant as it was when it was first released. The Recording Industry Association of America compiled a list of their songs of the century, and American Pie was right near the top at the number five spot thanks to its iconic retelling of history through catchy and memorable music. American Pie is a song about music and the home of rock and roll, America itself. America was collectively the generation lost in space, becoming the first nation to land on the moon, while back on Earth, unrest and riots rocked the country. American Pie is an anthem that immortalizes that time and place the way only music can. Do you have any theories about the lyrics of American Pie? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this one.